Hello, welcome to Fix the Space Time. In today's video, I have my last interview with the Inspiration 4 crew after they came back to Earth. Hayley is not in this interview, but I'll try to get one with her soon. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Thank you so, so much um, for coming on here for um, another interview. Um, welcome back. Um, so our first question is, um, what did you do um, a few days prior to launch? Hmm. Well, we were... We were getting ready. We had a pretty full schedule as it as you got closer to launch day. So, for example, the day before you had um, a bunch of um, like medical and then media events and then some family time. You know, the days prior to that, you had your dry dress rehearsal and launch readiness review. I know personally, I was I was going out for a run around the pad a bunch. Uh, actually, I think Hanks and Leo came a couple times too. So that was that was a good way for us to get close to our rocket without actually being in it. Yep, and dodging around all the mosquitoes at night and around all the wildlife running across the, the road. But it was a good time. It was a good chance to, like you said, get close to the rocket without touching it. And then we also got time with our families, which was nice because, the, and I mean, family that and friends with that, who were in quarantine with us uh, beforehand. Cool. Okay. Um, what was going through your head um, when you were about to launch? What, what kind of things were you thinking? I was thinking, wow, we're actually going to do this. <laughs> no, when we got down to the countdown, uh, I, it was just pure excitement that for not only everything that was happening, but also just knowing that um, it, it, our time had come, that we were going to space. And, and there was just so much excitement around that. Anticipation, uh, I guess. Yeah, well, I, I agree with Cyan on that one. It was at that feeling, oh my gosh, we're actually going to space. And then I had those moments of, oh my goodness, everybody else is watching us and following us along. And this is kind of a, a, an incredible momentous event that this, this is gonna mean something to so many people. And I kept going between that sense of awe and you know, the historical re revelation to like, oh my gosh, you're going to space. This is really cool. This is really fun. So I kept going back and forth. Yeah, I was... <laughs> Um, I remember a couple things. So one, I, uh, I peeked over from uh, behind the displays to look out the window and saw um, kind of the daylight, you know, turning to dusk and just thinking, uh, this is going to look really good. Like, I, I think we all had a good sense in the last couple minutes, like we, this might be timed perfectly. I also felt like I knew we were going to, I mean, you know, um, if you just think about it, a lot of the launches um, have been delayed for various reasons. And, you know, when I think when I think when we got down into that last hour, it was like, this is going to happen. We're, we're going today. There's not going to be any delays. Those things were lining up well. And then it was just all the things that we're supposed to do as we go uphill and get ready. Like what's what's coming next? Um, so anyway, that was what, what I was thinking about. OK, cool. Um, what did you do in your spare time while up in the SpaceX Dragon capsule? Wait, did we have spare time? <laughs> I no, I think uh, time, <laughs> a lot of it was uh, for me doing some art and also, uh, you know, taking in the view. I mean, if you had a moment when you weren't doing medical, then it was about trying to get the view. Did you, did that close out on you? Cause something I got a notice that came up, yeah. but. Um, so for me, it was the view for sure. Any spare moment, you had to look out a window somewhere. Right. And you know, when we did have a couple extra moments besides looking out the window, you know, take pictures of some of the things that met, that we brought up with us that felt really important to us. Um, you know, I know Cyan, you did some art. I played a little music on the ukulele. Haley was doing flips, and you know Jared was playing with the alien, chasing our little dog around into the spacecraft. So, uh, but otherwise, mostly we caught M and M's and really stuck to the timeline of trying to get all of our experiments done. Yeah, Leo and Hanks nailed it. Cool. Um, what was your opinion on the SpaceX spacesuits? What 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 did you feel like in them? I'd be wearing it now if I still had it. <laughs> Fit like a glove. It was so cool. I mean, nothing like having your own spacesuit. And uh, um, but no, it it was definitely um, functional and fashionable. 
Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. They look really cool, um, but they do weigh a lot more than you might think. I mean, that was probably the biggest surprise to me is it looks like just doesn't, you know, I mean, maybe because it's just so sleek and like kind of thin and not bulky, like a NASA suit that you just figure it's, it probably doesn't weigh a lot, but it's heavy. I mean, um, but other than that, yeah, it's, it's super cool to wear it. And like, uh, like Leo said, I mean, we'd be walking around our houses with them if we could. All right. Okay. Um, what was your goal for the, for the mission? And do you think you achieved that goal? Yeah, I'm, I feel very good uh, that we achieved really everything we set out to accomplish and then some. I mean, really exceeded expectations from when Inspiration4 was first created. And we didn't know who any of our crew members were going to be. And it turned out we, we got some really awesome individuals. Um, they all did exactly their job, which was to inspire their own audience and represent their mission pillars well. Um, we all trained really well to, to earn our right to go into space for sure. We set out some big goals for things that also had nothing to do with space, like raising a lot of money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And we surpassed that target. And then we made the most of our time on orbit, uh, all of our experiments and research, making it about something more than ourselves, like, you know, really the whole mission was meant to do. So, yeah, I think we really achieved everything we set out to accomplish. All right. Okay, cool. Um, so that's the um, that's all the questions I've, I've got for you. Um, I've got a few um, from people on Twitter. Um, Civilian Space asked, what food would you not recommend to take to space? Meal cubes. <laughs> no, I think the, the food that you wouldn't take to space uh, would be things that, uh, well, obviously what you don't like, um, but just because food and mood go hand in hand. And so you want to eat food that's going to make you feel good. Uh, but not just physically, but mentally, that it's mentally satisfying. So I think food that isn't mentally satisfying are foods to avoid. Oh, okay. Anything um, that breaks apart too. So I, I, didn't, I didn't personally witness this, but I heard the story from the rest of the crew that Haley tried to catch a, um, a Pop-Tart uh, like midair and it shattered into like a million pieces. So that that's never good because then it's all floating around you. Um, but, but Leo said it really well. It's just kind of like mountain climbing, which we found very similar. I mean, to going in space is like you, you want to be happy and, and you want to take food you're going to enjoy. Um, and uh, I think that's really the same as when you grow up into space. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, Callum Gray asks, while sleeping in microgravity, did you feel more comfortable given the weightlessness or was it more uncomfortable due to the abnormality of it? That's kind of a, each of us had our own answer to that, it felt like. I think, you no, know, Cyan, I know you and Haley like sleeping up there. Um, you had a nice flat spot underneath the seats on the cargo deck. Um, the three of us were, you know, we were strapped into our sleeping bags in our seats. So I think we were kind of curled up a little. Uh, and we each had our own different style of how we were sleeping. And we fell asleep right away every night. We were so exhausted trying to stay up with the timeline. Uh, I don't think any of us slept the full eight hours. Well, Cy, I know you stayed up late one night doing some art, but um, I mean, I I got a little uncomfortable, but I think that was just because my I get uncomfortable in on the earth anyway, sleeping in too long. I think my spine doesn't like to stretch out that much. So uh each of us just had our own answer. I took a little bit of, um, you know, ibuprofen in the morning to help out, but that's not too uncommon. Oh, okay. Um, I want to say uh, just really quickly. Oh, there I am. I want to say really quickly that uh, spatial disorientation, waking up in the middle of the night. So I really enjoyed sleeping in space. I, I normally remember my dreams, but I didn't while I was up there, which I thought was interesting. But I think the main reason why is because Every time I woke up, I was spatially disoriented. Uh, I would see like, you know, Rook's feet floating up ahead, uh, above me or sometimes like a spacesuit um, uh, bag got dislodged and would be floating and I'd be like, what is that? And then I'd grab it and kind of pull it back under and tuck it where it was supposed to be. So it was kind of a fun thing between sleeping and then waking up and being disoriented and being like, wait, wait, and then reminding yourself that you're floating in space. <laughs> Okay. Um, Rasmus um, on Twitter asks, how was the view? What, what was it like? What kind of things did you see? The view was absolutely stunning. Um, completely beyond anything what we 
probably all, all could have imagined. Uh, I know for most of us, when we look back at the earth, we saw so many clouds, but we saw all the incredible colors of the earth, the curvature of the earth, the shadows of the clouds that were streaking across the, the, the land and the oceans um, as the sun was rising and setting. It was really one of those things that you just can't help but just being all of what the earth looks like and how beautiful it is especially at night when you see those lines of thunderstorms across the land and they're just lighting up flashing those uh, bright flashes of lightning at the on the tops of the clouds non-stop and seeing the lights of the cities below as and you can see make out the outlines of the, the great lakes between the u.s and canada or you can see the lights over europe uh, when the clouds run over uh the continent um it was really just breathtaking I mean, to really just look through the cupola and see this beautiful blue orb uh, in its entirety of the horizon. I was seeing the entirety of the horizon right above us um, whenever we looked into it for the first time. And I know, Rick, you had a different reaction, but that most of us were just looking back at Earth and seeing how incredibly beautiful it was. Right, okay, wow. Um, Callum Gray has another question. What was the hardest thing to do in microgravity as opposed to here on Earth? For me, it was definitely just um, being still, like being able to uh, get myself anchored in someplace, especially when I was painting or doing something, because every little motion causes you to move. So I, uh, I found it um, fun yet interesting to like try to like, uh, not move and float away and, and figuring out how to best like lean into things and to put your feet in the right position to um, anchor yourself. And so that was kind of fun. Um, doing some of the medical stuff was, was more difficult because you had to kind of figure out how to control all of the packaging and the materials that came with that. And so you really have to think ahead when you're, you're taking on a task of how you're gonna manage all the materials. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, in terms of, I, I'd say just in terms of the stuff that you do every day, that's like um, most things I found were a lot easier to do in space because you can just float to everything you wanna do, like, and, and everything's so close by. So, you know, brushing your teeth, eating, like all that I found was actually rather easy. I, I think it, it was drinking, water was probably the harder part. Um, you had to kind of centrifuge the bottle to several times in order to get the last of the water out. But, you know, really other than that, I, I thought most things were actually, you know, kind of easier to do. Oh, okay, wow. Um, SpaceX360 on Twitter asks, would a free flight like yours be viable with a seven person crew? For, for sure, for, uh, like point to point to the space station. I mean, it was originally designed to have that capability. Um, I think, I, I think there, there's some additional like um, investment they need to put in to certify it. And I think there's some circumstances of, um, you know, there's probably, there's some safety things I understand on re-entry of why they, there was a little sensitivity to it. But uh, if you're just going from point A to B and back, um, yeah, and you don't need to take all that extra cargo, you could do it. I, I wouldn't recommend it for like, four or five days of, of living on orbit together. Um, but for point to point, sure. Oh, okay. Um, what's your, what are all your plans for the future? Um, well, my plan right now is to spend time with my family. Um, we're still going a hundred miles an hour or uh, we're still just speeding around going from event to event, uh, with my family, my kids going to different school activities, uh, and, We'll just see where things take us one day at a time. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's all the questions I've got for oh. you today. Um, thank you so, so much um, for, for let, um, having it, um, letting me come on for another interview and talk to you all. Um, it has, it's been great being able to um, follow along with your journey and be able to interview you. Um, and I hope you have a brilliant, brilliant rest of your day. Hey, thanks, Felix. All the best, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Felix. Thank you, Bye. buddy. Thanks, Felix. <laughs> Bye.